uh, whether you're a Catholic, whether you're evangelical, whether you're a, a Muslim, it doesn't matter. Many of the techniques I'm going to talk about here today uh, are universal in all the major religions. And we're going to try to understand how that works. So, we're going to talk about methods of infection. And I want to, I want to uh, have us think about religion as a, as a machine, as a mechanical device in some ways. It's kind of like the engine in your car. Now, what I, what I've seen in Hitchens and Dawkins, what I saw in, uh, in uh, Daniel Dennett and, and others that I've read them all, I'm sure many of you have read them all too, is they're very good at kind of explaining what color the car is and what kind of upholstery it's got. And what they don't tell you is how does that engine run? Where's the transmission? How does the fuel injection run? How do you get under the hood and see how that thing we call religion works? And why is it so similar? You know, a Chevy as an engine looks a lot like a Volkswagen. It's got cylinders, internal combustion, all that sort of stuff. Muslims look a whole lot like Christians once you get underneath the hood. And that's what we're going to try and understand. So it's the strategy I'm focusing on. How do viruses strategically penetrate a cell or a body? How do religions strategically penetrate a mind of a human being? Human beings have something similar. It enters the ears at an early age, it germinates in the mind, and causes the host to denigrate or destroy rival communities while reproducing abnormally rapidly, thus permitting the parasite to breed, exit the mouth, and infect others. It is commonly known as religion. All right, you look familiar. There are remarkable strategies of similarities and strategies of infection that we're going to look at whether they're viruses, bacteria, or parasites. The infection strategies of religion look like viruses, bacteria, and parasites, the strategies that they actually use. And there's two kinds of infection that we'll see. In biology, oh, let's say a woman has HIV, and she's pregnant, and she has the baby. She's very likely to pass that HIV on to the baby. The virus will, will be passed on to the baby. That's what we call a vertical strategy of infection, so it's across generations. If that same person, woman, say through sex with her sex partner, gives it to another person, that's a horizontal infection strategy. So you can see that HIV has got a vertical and a horizontal infection strategy. It works both ways. Some religions have more vertical strategies and some more horizontal strategies. Um, think about this. What is the infection strategy of Jehovah's Witness. What's their... It's much more horizontal, right? The younger the religion, the more horizontal they have to have because they don't have a lot of generations to pass it down through. Mormons, I mean, look at that. They haven't been around that long, so they have a strong emphasis on horizontal strategy. This is why they send those poor teenage kid boys out on mission trips, you know, when they're young. Get out there when you're too stupid to know any better and knock on doors. That's a horizontal infection strategy. Now, they also have a very vertical infection strategy because if you're born a Mormon, you're going to stay a Mormon. If you come hell or high water, we're going to try and keep you in there. And then, lots of kids. Yeah, and you have lots of kids. Yeah, very vertical strategy as well. <coughs> but there are, there are um, religions like the Druze in, uh, in the Israel, Lebanon, Syria area. The Druze are a quasi-Muslim religion, but they closed their religion in the late 1200s. You literally cannot become a Druze. And if you're a Druze and you marry somebody outside the Druze religion, then you're no longer a Druze. You're kicked out. They never want to see you again. It's, you cannot convert to their religion, and they can't leave it. Pardon? D-R-U-Z-E. D-R-U-Z-E. They're very ancient, and they're vilified by the Muslims. They, they have some beliefs that are kind of strange and different relative to the Muslims, of course. <laughs> but, uh, but they have nothing but a vertical strategy. There's no horizontal there. You don't go out and convert people to become a Druze. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, Scientologists. Scientologists have a, a major horizontal strategy. They haven't been around long enough to have any generations through which to infect. So we can see that infection strategies of biology and infection strategies of religion can look similar in that way. How do you infect somebody with a new religion? The primary strategy of most religions, though, is vertical. You want to indoctrinate and brainwash your kids 
so they stay into, they, they're infected with that particular religion. 